Hello trumpet players, today I want to talk to you a little bit about three steps, and this is three out of seven that I teach. Three steps to work on your all-state etudes. We're posting this today because in six days, the Allstate Jazz Etudes are going to be available. And yes, this year again, I wrote all three of the Jazz Trumpet Etudes. That's the Allstate, Texas Allstate Jazz Trumpet Etudes. All three of them. Yay! That's three in a row, three years in a row. Um, so we're excited about that. Anyway, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time sharing with you how we work with my students on, and I'm not going to give you the, all the details. We, get, we, we have an opportunity in the lessons to get into very fine detail. Okay. I teach seven different stages for preparing music like this. I'm going to teach you right now the three most important of those seven. All right. Uh, now, before we get into it, let me tell you this. That when you practice, it, and I had a video about this, I guess two years ago, I called it the worst way to practice. When you practice, don't just try to get the music right. Okay, that's the worst way to practice. And I'm, I'll try to remember to put a link here. When you practice, you want to have some sort of method, some sort of system, some organized approach to learning what it is that you have to be able to perform. So this, what I'm going to show you now, is three of seven stages that I do with my students. And we do this with everything. We're only saying all state music now because that's what's coming up, right? So the first step, always, is to study the music. And I'm going to say right now, those of you who jump in there right away. You know, I had a student, not a student. I had a, a, a comment on one of my videos uh, a few years ago. And the, the guy said, um, I'm so, oh, I remember exactly his comment. I'm so glad I learned these etudes before you published them. My recording, right? Um, he learned all the etudes in a week. And I'm like, that's not how you, you know, this is a competition, not, not a competition of who can get there fastest. It's a competition of who can play the best. And almost always when you go fast, when you learn something fast. Now, I don't know if that student made Allstate or not, or if he made Region, but that's just not a good way to practice. Okay, first stage is to study the music. And in that first stage, the most important part of that is listening to the music. That's why I post these videos. I'm going to post all three of them Friday morning. I can do that because I wrote them, so I've got them here, right? I don't have to wait till they show up in the mail. But they are available on the 15th, so that's the day I'm going to release them. I don't believe in doing anything unethical, so I will not even give people hints beforehand. Okay? So, now that we do, we do 10 times listening without looking at the music. And then we do 10 times listening while looking at the music, but you must resist the urge to try to finger. And the reason why is because you might, see, when you're, when you're just fingering, there's nothing there to tell you you just played a wrong note. Right? And by the way, this is why we do the listening, is to tell so that when you're practicing, you know immediately if you did a, a wrong note. If you played a wrong note, or even a wrong rhythm for that matter, we don't do this listening so that you can learn the music, right? I remember a long time ago, people used to say this was spoon feeding. I don't believe this is spoon feeding. 
I don't believe that at all. If we're so, let, let me tell you this: if you're doing etudes in my lessons, we don't do the listening because I want you to be able to hear for yourself. But this is a competition, and I want you to do the best that you can do. And listening helps you know when you made a mistake. That's the most important thing with listening. Now, there's other things you can do during this first stage to study the music. One of those things, for example, is to look through and find all the measures that have accidentals that carry through. And by the way, I believe in having three copies of the music. I believe in having a, a practice copy, a, a, a study copy, and a performance copy. The performance copy should be clean. I, last thing we want when we're performing is last thing we want when we're performing is to have our mistakes glaring at us on the paper. We don't want that, right? So just think of the mental part of that, right? All of your, if, you're, if you take your practice copy to the, to the audition, all of the mistakes you ever made are glaring at you. It's better to have a clean copy. And the, it's also better to have an, uh, a study copy that's separate from your practice copy, okay? So when you're doing your study copy, go through and with a red pen, circle the notes that carry through. Let's say you have an F sharp at the beginning of the measure, and there's another F sharp later in the measure. Circle that. Maybe put a sharp next to it, just as a mental exercise. We don't want that on the practice copy. Let's make that very clear. We don't want that on the practice copy. Do not mark accidentals into your music. I know band directors like you to do that. If you're my student, we don't do that because it puts off the day that you eventually learn how to read music. Okay, so we don't do that. Um, another thing that happens in this first stage is if the music is in a key that you're not comfortable with, you want to do the tonalization studies in that key first. Get used to the key first. Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes. And that's what this first stage is all about, is minimizing the mistakes you make when you first start uh, learning the music. Okay? Now on to the second stage, the second step. And that's working backwards on the music. I have a etude here that I want to show you. This is from the Doom book. Is that right? Yeah, do them. And I'm doing number 17. It doesn't matter. So the last two bars, right? And I actually believe in doing that 10 times. Even though you can already play it. That's the thing, right? Th those guys that could learn the music in a week, they could already play that too, couldn't they? This is not about... Can you already play it? This is about being so well prepared that no matter what the circumstances are at the audition, you're going to nail it. That's not the same thing as, as going in there, jumping in and getting... Anyway, so, uh, so we're going to play that 10 times. Then we're going to go back one measure. <laughs> And then we're gonna sing a finger, da 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 ti da 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 ti ti da, and we're gonna play that ten times. Da 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 ti da 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 ti da da. Play that ten times. Then we're gonna add that to what we already have. Okay, and. Just adding one measure at a time. You can do two measures at a time if it's really, really easy. But you keep, you start at the end, you keep adding measures until you get to the beginning. Now, this was taught to me as a way to memorize music. It was taught to me by two different people. Uh, great teachers, great musicians. One of them was Abraham Chavez, who used to be the conductor of the El Paso Symphony. 
And the other one was Hanak Telorin, who was a flautist from uh, Israel. Both of them were teachers at the university that I went to. And both of them taught this working backwards, but they taught working backwards as a way to memorize music. I later ad adapted it and adopted it both uh, to be used as a way to learn music you've never seen before. It's a wonderful way to practice something that you've never played before. It's wonderful. So, yes, you just keep adding the music back, adding the music back until you get to the beginning. Now, I, like I said, I have tweaks for this stuff. There's ways to save time and ways to get the best benefit from it. We don't have time to talk about that in this lesson, in this video. <laughs> I'm a little tired today. All right, so um, the third, which is actually the fourth. We're skipping the third one because in Allstate, there's hardly ever a need for endurance. Most students, if, if they're good enough to make Allstate or Region, they already have that endurance. So it's been extremely rare for us to work on endurance in the Allstate music. Okay, so we skip number three and go to number four. And that's playing the music beginning to end without stopping no matter how bad it is. And people say, well, Mr. Lewis, you can't do that. You have to stop. Mistakes are so important. We must stop and fix them. And you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. But don't stop the music. Stop the process. So let's say you want to do 10 times beginning to end without stopping. And you do the first one, and you do the second one, and you make mistakes on both of those, and it's the same mistakes over again. And you say, stop, I need to fix those mistakes. You don't stop in the middle of the music and fix the mistakes. You stop doing your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I hope that makes sense. Don't stop the music. You want to get in the habit of, of what I call the follow-through. No matter what happens, you keep going. And some people think that the reason why I teach that is so that when you get to the performance, you don't accidentally stop. And sure, that's one of the benefits, but it's a whole bunch more. I won't get into all the benefits, but it's a whole bunch more than just that. And by the way, these... When, when we do this, when we go from the top of the piece to the bottom of the piece without stopping, I consider that a mock performance. So we're trying to put all of the expression in it. We're trying to make it sound as good as it needs to be to make it the all state. Okay? We want it to be good enough to make, to make all state every time that you play it. So obviously, some, one of the questions I get sometimes is, you want me to do that all in one day? No. <laughs> no, it's not all in one day. You might do five today. Five the next day. You don't do it all in one day. Do it once all the way through, take a break. Come back and do another mock audition right there. Do it again. Mock performance. All right. That's after you've worked the, the music backwards to the beginning. Those are three steps. Let's, let's review it real quick. We're going to study the music, which includes listening to it. We're going to work backwards on the music. And then we're going to play the music after you've worked backwards to the beginning. You're going to play it through a number of times uh, without stopping. There are four other stages that I teach. Actually, now that, now that I've been uh, messing with this, there's more stages, but it's, it's still the seven stages. I'm going to stick to that number because the other ones are extra. So, yes, this is, this is the system. I've had students that made Allstate just with these three steps. Now, let me give you one caveat before we sign off here. 
none of these methods work if you don't have what we call self what's the what's the word self evaluation you have to listen to what you're saying what you're playing and say that's not good enough if it's good enough and it's not really good enough but you think it's good enough it doesn't matter what method you use you're still not going to make all state you'll probably not even make region that i think is the biggest problem with most students the reason why they don't make it is because they don't hold themselves to high enough of a standard and i will say this when you're working backwards you don't move on so i told you add this measure add that measure add this measure you do not add the next measure until what you just added now is all state quality. Let that sink in. A lot of you want to jump in there, play it horribly, and then improve it to all state quality does not work like that. You have to be all state quality from the beginning. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important. And for some of you, it's too late to be hearing this, right? It's so important that when you do have time, now if you're gonna if you're not doing jazz and the classical stuff, right? You hear this this week in May, and the classical stuff doesn't come up until uh, July. You have time to act on this. You should learn all of this stuff. You should get your skill levels up. You should get your quality standards up. Your standard of quality up. Before the music comes out, that's why that's so important. You don't want to be struggling with quality when the music is already here. If you're not a quality player, that's not something you just turn on. Okay? All right. So that's what I have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down there. God bless you. We'll see you on the next video.